Science popularization is a great way to engage the general public in science. However, science popularization can sometimes make science a little bit too easy, and that can be a problem. In this talk, I'm going to be discussing the easiness effect of science popularization. Now, I'm going to go back to a uh, basic idea I've discussed in a lot of my lectures, and that is that science helps people make decisions, or understanding science helps people make decisions. But some things can stand in the way of people making those decisions. For example, when an issue is particularly complex, people have difficulty making decisions. Or uh, sometimes people have prior orientations, predispositions based on values, ideology, and so on, that guide their decisions irrespective of scientific information they encounter. And people are especially prone to rely on those prior orientations when they encounter really complex issues. There's just too much information for them to process, and so they revert to their gut instinct based on their personal orientation. Now, experts, scientific experts, are a useful source of science communication, a useful means of engaging with the public and helping them make these decisions. And I'm going to talk about the role of experts in this regard using the metaphor of a funnel. So experts are kind of like a funnel who take the bulk of scientific evidence and condense it down into the most relevant information that individuals can use to make decisions. And this is a nice model because who better than experts to take all that complex knowledge and make sense of it, point to the aspects of that knowledge that individuals can use. Of course, there are a couple drawbacks, a couple hindrances of this experts as funnel model. First, well, people don't always know which experts to choose. In fact, I think in a lot of instances, an individual could ask two different experts for their opinion and discover two completely different conclusions or be pointed to two very different sets of information. And it's not that the two scientists disagree with each other, but perhaps they see the relevant information for that case being different. Uh, another hindrance is knowing one's own limitations. And this kind of goes back to those uh, orientations, those values and ideologies that very often drive people's decisions. And sometimes people rely on their gut instincts and over rely on those gut instincts, not really recognizing the limitations of reasoning and making decisions based on those gut instincts. And so there's this idea that complexity is a hindrance and experts can help people through that complexity, yet there are some limitations to what experts can do or how people can use experts. So what can be done then when complexity is hindering a decision? Well, here's where science popularization comes in. Science popularization offers a means of making science easier for the lay public to understand, making it less complex. And so science popularization uh, does a few things. And by the way, this is something that scientific experts and scientists do. They engage in science popularization. So scientists as the funnel, that's one way to think about how they can engage in science communication, but scientists can also engage in science popularization, communicating about science to the public uh, in a slightly different way. It's not simply condensing the information and saying, here's the information that's relevant to you. It's really bringing the science to the public in terms that they can understand. And so this can be done in a number of ways, like translating jargon. Uh, simplifying the statistics, uh, simplifying the results of scientific studies, and similarly, summarizing the methods, not presenting all of the complexities of the scientific methods used to arrive at the conclusions, but a brief enough summary so that the public 
roughly understands how the science was done. These are just a few ways that experts can engage in popularization, making uh, science more accessible to the public. And so I'm going to uh, shift up this funnel metaphor a little bit. So popularization is the funnel with experts sitting at the top. And by the way, experts don't have to be scientists. Uh, some of the best science popularizers out there are YouTube creators. And many of the popular science-related YouTube channels are made by creators who are not scientists. Maybe they have science background, maybe they studied science to a great extent, but they aren't practicing scientists. Um, and some of them are even journalists. So there are these people who have a strong interest in science and a good understanding of science, but aren't themselves scientists, yet they can engage in popularization because what they're doing is they're taking all that scientific evidence and they aren't condensing it into the most relevant information per se. I mean, that's part of it, but they're condensing it into the most digestible information. Information that is most easy for audiences to understand and uh, make sense of and use in their own lives. The issue with science popularization, though, is it can make science a bit too easy. It can oversimplify science, which is inherently a complex endeavor. And there are a couple mechanisms whereby easiness may become a problem. So first is the simple representations of science may create in audiences' minds the notion that science is simple, right? The statistics were very basic that the article presented and the methods were really crude and there wasn't much to it so the scientific study was simple. There were no complexities. Of course, that's, uh, that's missing a lot of the aspects of the science that was conducted. Uh, another issue is, is the ease of understanding can lead to a greater liking of the claim. And this is, um, this is something else that happens when people are overloaded with complex information. They tend to look at peripheral or superficial cues about the information in which they're engaging. And so the ease of understanding a scientific claim isn't necessarily related to the quality of the science behind the claim. Yet people tend to find more agreeable the claims that are easier to understand. And so you can see how people will tend to agree more with claims that aren't necessarily good claims. So these are a couple problems uh, to do with easiness. Now, uh, Scherer et al. in a research paper talked about this process of easiness and the easiness effect. And they uh, went through this process uh, beginning with the claim. So claims uh, lead in some cases to audiences agreeing with the claims. Of course, not always, but when audiences agree with claims, it suggests they are ready to make some kind of decision because they're agreeing with the claim. They probably had some sort of decisional task on their mind. And those who are ready to act on the basis of their agreement with that claim will then make a decision. All right, so this is a basic, uh, basic flow going from encountering a scientific claim to making a decision on the basis of that claim. Easiness hasn't entered into the picture yet. But here's easiness. So one thing I talked about on the previous slide is that easier to understand claims are more agreeable. So it affects the relationship between the claim statement and agreement with the claim. Easiness of uh, the claim also affects an individual's confidence in their own understanding. If it was easy to understand, well, then individuals probably tend to understand it. And it's kind of an inherent human thing Thing to be overconfident in our own knowledge. All right, and then that confidence tends to lead to a greater readiness on the basis of that agreement. So when people agree with a claim and they're confident in their belief, then they're going to be especially ready to do something about that. And then their confidence leads to greater independence from experts. Individuals who are confident in their own knowledge are going to be less likely to seek out the opinions of experts in making that decision. And of course, that affects uh, ultimately how they create their decisions. They tend to rely more on their own knowledge, whether or not that knowledge is complete, whether or not it's based on good science. Uh, in a different study, uh, Scherer et al. 
it's a different et al, um, different group of researchers. Of course, Shera was still the first author. They put this idea of an easiness effect to the test. They conducted an experiment, and so before the experimental manipulation, they measured a number of variables. Uh, they measured agreement with different scientific claims, uh, things like alcohol is good for health, right? A bunch of different scientific claims relating X and Y. Uh, and then they also measured the preferred decision-making strategy, whether people rely on their own knowledge, whether they rely on their knowledge after consulting with some expert sources, or whether they prefer to rely on experts entirely for their decisions. Then the participants read four articles, making four different claims. Two of the articles were from tabloids that were written for the general public, easy to comprehend, uh, these are popular science articles. And then the other two articles were from uh, science magazines written by scientists or very science-minded individuals and meant for scientists and very science-minded individuals. A lot more technical jargon, less easy to understand, less accept uh, accessible to the general public. And after reading each article, the participants answered a number of questions. And here's what the results showed. So the participants rated the lay audience articles as being more uh, comprehensible than the expert audience articles. That's a straightforward finding. It's not surprising. It's actually suggesting a good thing about science popularization. It makes science easier to read, easier to understand. Uh, but then after that finding, we get into some of the um, questionable findings, whether these are good or bad things. So the participants found, or they agreed more with the claims in the lay audience articles. So this is going back to the idea of people applying this mental heuristic. If it's easy to understand, it must be better. And that can be a good thing if the claims are correct, but a lot of the times uh, the claims are only part of the story. Maybe there is some conflicting scientific evidence. And so people agreeing with just that claim might mean they're agreeing with something that isn't necessarily correct. Um, the participants also, uh, after reading the lay audience articles, tended to trust more in their own knowledge to make decisions. And also they tended to uh, regard experts as less essential to their decisions. And these are definitely problematic because very often people's gut instincts are going to be missing some key aspects of a, a scientific phenomenon. I mean, I don't know, I love ice cream and my gut instinct is to eat ice cream all the time. Of course, that's a terrible gut instinct and in so many ways our gut instincts aren't really the best source of information for making decisions. Very often we need to look to expert sources to help us make our decisions. And so those, those are a couple problems of the science popularization articles, those lay audience articles. Um, something that Scherer et al. talked about though as potential solutions to this easiness effect is when scientific claims are mm, controversial, where there is some disagreement. For example, the claim that alcohol is good for health Presenting one side of the argument or presenting uh, one scientific claim in accessible, easy to consume language, uh, science popularization, that can be okay as long as the audience is made aware of the fact that there is disagreement. Uh, another way to reduce this easiness effect is simply to mention that the issue is complex. And so when audiences read a claim and come to understand that claim through very simple, easy to understand language, but then they read that the claim that, uh, that claim is not conclusive, that there is some disagreement, when they read that the scientific phenomenon is more complex than this simple claim presents, then they might form an initial decision based on that claim, but they'll recognize that there's still uh, an important need for expert opinion, for consulting with scientists, and the easiness effect is diminished. And so the important takeaway here is that science popularization, again, is a great way to engage the public with science, but it can lead to an easiness effect that's problematic. Science communicators and science popularizers really need to situate these easy concepts 
within the uh, idea that science is in, um, that science is uh, not certain, that science is complex. And through that, science popularization can be effective in helping people make decisions. Thanks for watching.